Okay, uh, we're going to wrap up our discussion of electricity by talking about electrical safety. Um, we're going to have three videos along these lines, although the third one is kind of more about electrical power transmission, but it will involve some safety also. So basically two videos about this. This first video is, a bit, is about conditions under which um, electricity is, is dangerous, perhaps most dangerous. Um, and then the next video we'll talk about um, ways that you can make things safer using fuses and circuit breakers, uh, basically. So we'll talk about all that in terms of electrical safety. So this video, we're going to talk about uh, situations and the basics of dangerous electricity, when dangerous, when electricity is hazardous to you. Okay, so here we go. Before we actually get into certain situations that are dangerous, I want to address the issue of grounding because I'm not totally sure that you guys are all going to be familiar with what it means to ground something. All right, so you have to imagine the Earth as a gigantic sink and source of electrons, basically unlimited. Um, let me give you a little visual of what that might look like. Okay, so here we have a really crude drawing that I made for you. Um, you just needed some visual. Uh, I felt like you needed a visual for this, and I hadn't put it into the original document. So here we go. Um, here is a view of the Earth, obviously not to scale. Um, but let's just imagine the Earth as this giant sphere of earthiness. And you can basically think of this as a place where you can dump electrons if you need to. Just stick them there into the Earth. Bam, get rid of them. They're gone. Well, they've joined the, all the other electrons that are there in the Earth. And then anytime you need to get some electrons out from the Earth, you can just pull them out, basically. You, don't, you just stick something conductive into the Earth, and bam, you can get electrons out or put them in. Same thing, stick something conductive into the earth and you can dump electrons into the earth and it just soaks them up. So basically all you need is a conductive metal stake that you can stick into the earth and then you can either pull electrons out from the earth at will or you can dump electrons into the earth at will. You can imagine the earth as being an infinite source of electrons and an infinite sink, basically a um, place you can dump them um, like, like a sink. Of electrons. So that's what we mean when we say grounded or earthed. We've connected whatever our electrical device is into the earth, and that means that if it needs to get rid of extra electrons, it can just dump them into the earth, and if it needs to get extra electrons, it can pull them out from the earth. All right, so that's what grounding means. Um, how do you do it? Well, these are some just some schematic versions. Um, you might have an electrical device here with a metal casing, for example, a refrigerator, which we'll look at more in the next slide. Um, and it's going to get its power from what's called the mains, the mains power, or basically just plug it into the wall, the wall socket. And then um, you've got that casing connected to the ground so that if anything goes wrong, which we'll talk about in the next slide, then the casing has a ready source of electrons that it can dump electrons into the ground or pull them out as needed. Okay? Um, in a more general sense, you guys may not be aware of this, but the way that power transmission works is that there's uh, basically a live wire that comes from the power plant through the electrical transmission system, which would be all of those power lines that you see along the roads and such, into your house, your house's electrical system, and your household's electrical system is grounded. Now the power plant is also grounded. And what this does is it allows the power plant to just have a basically a one-way transmission of the electricity. They do not need a return circuit. All right, all they have to do is provide a one-way path to your house, and then your house is grounded, and the other end of the power plant is grounded, and that makes a complete circuit, okay? So without needing to have wires going back and forth, so like one wire to come to your house and another wire to go all the way back to the power plant, you don't have to have the two-way electrical system if you use a grounding system. So the power plant is grounded, your house is grounded, 
that basically means that your house is connected to the power plant through the earth, through the grounding. So this, the grounding basically completes the circuit. Really interesting. Um, it's actually something that I learned from teaching this course. I did not know that that's how power transmission systems worked, but there you have it. What might this look like at your house? Well, it might look basically like that. If you've ever seen a big, like a stake sticking into the ground somewhere near your house, that may very well be your grounding for your electrical system. So that is that. Uh, that's the basics of grounding. Now, why is this important? Well, um, in a more specific sense, when you're talking about electrical devices, such as a refrigerator or something like that, which is, of course, connected into the mains power, which in the Philippines is 220 volts, or in the U.S. is 110 volts, which is a bit safer but still dangerous. Um, so you've got this refrigerator, and what we have it happens all the time, right? People come and they touch the fridge, um, which is metal. Some some refrigerators are painted with a with a non-conductive coating. Some are not painted, um, but in any case, let's just assume that we've got a refrigerator that is that is bare metal, or maybe just a thin varner veneer of varnish on the outside of it, um, and we'll just say it's a metal casing, and you're touching it. Okay, normally that's no problem. Uh, it's it's not going to have any electricity running through the outside of that refrigerator, so it doesn't matter if you touch it. However, if the wiring has become damaged, and let's say that this red live wire has come loose on the inside of the casing and it's touching the metal, touching the metal, okay? If that is happening, let's get it so you can see my little label here. If that is occurring right here, and this person touches the case, and this person is standing like, say, barefoot on the ground, that means this person is grounded, they have now touched the case, which is connected to the live wire, and that's going to allow the electricity, as we were just discussing, to flow through the live wire, through the case, into the person, and into the ground, and that will complete a circuit. The person will become part of the circuit. They will get shocked, and possibly really badly. All right? Um, the common term for that is electrocuted, but technically the word electrocute means to kill by electric shock. So anything short of death is an electric shock, not electrocution. But in any case, um, this person will get a shock at the very least, and if, if it's bad enough, they may get electrocuted by this situation. So what can we do to prevent that? We can make sure that the metal case itself is grounded. Now, a person can make a pathway to the ground, and they might still get shocked even if this case is grounded. But the person has a whole lot more electrical resistance than a bare wire, all right? So this is going to be a much, um, a much more preferred pathway for the electricity to flow if there is a grounding attached to the casing, then that will render this situation much less dangerous because most of the extra electricity from that live wire touching the case and energizing the case with electricity, most of that extra electricity is just going to run off down into the ground. And if somebody comes along and touches it, they might get a minor shock, but they won't get a very big shock. So this is the reason why you need, on electrical devices, you need the metal casing to be grounded just in case a fault occurs inside that's going to make it dangerous for a person to touch that metal case. All right, so here we are at the most generic and general sorts of electrical hazards. Um, the first one we want to talk about is damaged insulation. Uh, basically where the wiring, the plastic coating around the wiring has frayed or broken and that's exposing the wire inside. Now there's a couple of things that can happen here. The first one is that if this is two, if there are two separate wires inside, um, inside here and the insulation is frayed, you might get a short circuit where basically those two wires inside are not supposed to touch each other, but they do touch each other, and that forms a, a pathway that the electrical current can flow through without going to your device, whatever your device is over here, right? So that, that would be going to a device.
But if you get a short circuit, then it doesn't go to the device. The electricity is just going to go jun 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 and right back again without ever getting to the device. And that means that it is not going to experience the resistance that it is supposed to experience by passing through the device. That means the current is going to be way higher than it is supposed to be in this part of the circuit. And really high current means a lot more heat in this wire and very likely it's going to cause a fire or break a fuse or pop a circuit breaker or something like that. All right, so that's the first thing, short circuit. And then the second thing, overheating, basically. Or you could, uh, the other thing, right, That because the short circuit would lead to overheating and then possibly an electrical fire. Um, the other thing is that it could just shock somebody, right? So somebody comes over and touches this, wire that is now frayed and loose and there's pieces of wire sticking out perhaps and they touch it then they could again complete the circuit with the ground that they're standing on and and receive an electric shock by touching that damaged wiring okay um, we just talked about overheating in the context of this up here so overheating can occur when there's a short circuit or when you overload a circuit with too much electricity so if you're pulling too many amps through a wire and it's not designed to carry that many amps, then it's going to get too hot and it may cause a fire um, if you don't fix that situation. Okay. Lastly, uh, for this video, damp conditions. So what do I mean by that? Basically, I mean if it's damp, if there's if it's wet. Water is a pretty good conductor due to having dissolved ions that can carry the electricity. So any kind, anytime you're in a damp situation and you're handling electrical things, then it's always possible that you could end up um, receiving electric shock or worse. Um, possibly you could ruin your electrical devices because you have gotten water in them and now electricity is flowing in parts of them that it's not meant to flow. Uh, so you can damage electrical devices by getting them wet. You guys know that, I'm sure. Um, and you can hurt yourself as well um, if you are handling electrical devices in a damp sort of environment. Now, this kid is being very safe. He's just playing in that puddle. I don't see any electronics or any electrical devices on him or near him. He should be just fine, unless, of course, somebody drops some kind of wire or something into this puddle with him by accident and then electricity would be able to flow in there and then he'd be in danger. But um, anyways, the main point is that when there is water and damp conditions, then the dangers of the electrical shock and, and all that sort of thing increase because water is a very good conductor. Okay, that's it for the basics of electrical safety. In the next video, we want to talk about how you can use fuses and circuit breakers um, to be even more safe in all kinds of situations. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.